Today we're going to learn how to make an interior rolling style barn door. Uh, these are very popular these days, they're very modern looking. And our particular application, we have a, a master bedroom that has a 42 inch wide opening that goes from the bedroom into the, into the master bath area. And um, it had no door on it, so we wanted some privacy and so a, a rolling style barn door really made uh, a lot of sense, best solution. Uh, so we thought, well, we'll go to the home improvement store and we'll price these. And uh, we found that if you have a simple 36 inch wide opening, um, you can buy one of these for around $400. However, as I mentioned, our opening was 42 inches wide, which means we had to have a door that's 46 inches wide, you want a, more, a little overlap, and then 84 inches tall. Well, that would be a custom made door. And so when we priced that, it'd be anywhere between $14 and $2,100. Well, clearly that's not gonna fly. So I decided, well, I can certainly make one of these. Now the style of cabinetry that we have in our house is craftsman style or uh, shaker style. And so we decided that uh, we'll just do a standard, simple uh, three panel door. And so when you go to purchase materials, that's really critical to how hard or how easy this project's gonna be. So um, I first thought I was gonna be using some pre-finished birch plywood. Uh, and then when I went to three different uh, home improvement centers, I couldn't find one that was straight. They were all wavy or crowned. And of course, you know, hang, a, hang a door like that with a crown and it's gonna look horrible. So obviously I realized that plywood was not gonna work. So I decided to go with a medium density fiberboard or what they call MDF. And um, this is quite a bit heavier. Um, in fact, uh, this can weigh two and a half to three times as much as uh, some plywoods. So, um, but the good news is MDF is flat it's, and it's straight. And so you don't have to worry about it being crowned or anything like that. It's gonna be flat, straight, and smooth. Very smooth surface. And so uh, it made the most sense. So this is a 5 8 inch thick piece. Now, a couple tips uh, working with MDF. When you um, uh, take latex paint, water-based paint, and you were to paint wood-based materials like this, it causes the wood fibers to raise up and swell. And so if you don't sand that, you don't fix that problem, uh, it's going to um, uh, really give you a rough finish. So what I like to do is use what they call sanding sealer. And what it is is basically shellac, and you just get a roller and roll it on. And um, what that does is that, that causes that wood fiber to raise, and it seals that. Then you come back with a sander, or even by hand, you come back and simply uh, sand the sanding sealer smooth. That way, when you come back and paint, that water-based paint is not going to cause that grain to raise or the wood fibers to raise, and um, you're going to get a much smoother, smoother finish. Okay, so now, what about the style of our, our door? Well, like I said, we want to do a Craftsman Shaker uh, style. And so I started out with a simple MDF trim. Uh, I started out with one by sixes for my vertical pieces or my styles. And I cut off both sides um, and cut this down to four inches because that's the dimensions that I wanted. And you may be wondering why I ripped both sides is because I wanted to have that real sharp edge. So when these pieces come together in the middle, I don't have any, uh, any gaps. So anyway, um, so then you just kind of lay it out like this and, and then you can come back and more precisely um, cut everything to the exact lengths that you need. And of course, having some wood clamps is very helpful in this process. Uh, but in any event, this kind of gives you a feel about um, how, the, how these go together and what this is going to look like. And so when they talk about a three panel um, door like this, what they mean is three separate spaces. So for example, um, this first one down here would be one, and this would be two, right? And this would be three. So these are three, three basic three panels. And um, then we have to, you know, kind of decide how we want to fasten these, right? How do we want to, how do we want these to have a fasten? Well, I start with my uh, styles first. You know, I think it's important to get uh, these put in place. And basically the process is a very simple one. Um, you do, I just simply, um, you know, fold this back and then I run some glue. And I like to use this tight bond um, waterproof glue because it is in the bathroom area and high moisture. So I go in a serpentine pattern like this, then take a disposable bristle brush and simply brush it out smooth so that the entire surface area is covered with glue. And then I simply push this back over, put it in position, might even use some wood clamps. And then um, I come back with my brad nailer and then I, I shoot these brads on a regular pattern to distribute the, you know, the, this throughout the main pattern evenly. And then that, what that does is that pulls this trim tight to the other end, so there's no gaps and so forth. And then when this, um, you know, all, when the glue dries, you got a really solid, solid connection. So again, start with the styles, 
then do the rails. And for my um, uh, rails, I just simply use uh, one by fours. Okay. Now, you may be asking, what do we do on the underneath side of this? Well, the underneath has exactly the same type of finish. It's a mirrored uh, image of what this is. And um, so you might be saying, so, well, now, what, what do we do with the edges? Because now we have sort of an MDF sandwich, because we got a layer of, of um, trim. We have the M MDF underlayment, and then we have our trim on top of that. So what I did was uh, use some of this thin wood veneer. Now, what some people will do is just buy some more MDF trim or trim, wood trim, and trim it out and picture frame it like you would, um, you know, a picture, really. But I didn't want that extra thickness. I didn't want the extra line. I wanted it to be, match our cabinets exactly. So I went to the woodworking store, and I bought some of this uh, birch veneer, uh, which has a hot glue, uh, melt, hot melt glue on the bottom. And then you simply set the panel up on edge. You put this on here like this, and then you t and, and use the iron to put this piece on, and then I use a J roller to, to pressure that into position so the glue really sets tight to the wood and the, and the frame, and um, pretty simple. Uh, and then the next phase is that we simply want to mount our hardware. Now this hardware I got online is stainless steel with an eight foot track, costs $85 including shipping, very reasonable, come with all the hardware and great instructions. And so um, this is, um, you know, very simple, you just follow the instructions. I bolt this all up before you do your finished work, then you take it all back apart again, and then finish this, and then uh, bolt your hardware back up, then make sure you're, you're, you, know, you have to install your track. That takes about, you know, 30 to 40 minutes, but make sure when you install that track that you anchor that into the stud. So these tracks are pre-drilled at 16 inches on center, and um, so you don't want to rely upon drywall anchors for that because I said these can weigh over 100 pounds and so you want to make sure that your track is firmly anchored into the studs. And then you're ready to hang your door. Now this whole uh, project cost me uh, less than $300, about $275 to build this, this, this door. So I um, really encourage you to give it a try. It's very simple, very easy and the end result I think you'll like.